Greetings to all my subscribers and newcomers to the channel. Today is the first of my State of the Collection videos for 2023. I've been collecting now for just over a year and I've downsized my overall collection and honed in on a more specific model of collecting. So before we get started, we'll take a look at this new addition to the Phoebus family on my wrist here. And it's the new Proteus model PY046B with an NH35 movement a bronze 42 millimeter case size that is 13 millimeters thick as well, a screw down crown with 300 meters of water resistance, some killer loom featuring 15 layers of C3 and BGW9 throughout the case and bezel, and not to mention a limited edition of only 100 pieces. I'm just ecstatic to get this blue dial that really pops, but there are other colors like white, black, salmon, and green to choose from, so, really cool addition to the Phoebus microbrand family, and I wish you the best of luck if you try to attain one. Now, to get back to why we're here, let's take a figurative dive into the Collection and get our appetites wet for some fantastic watches. Alpina was founded in 1883, but as of 2003 is owned by Frédéric Constant. They made the first anti-shock, anti-magnetic, stainless steel, and waterproof watch. This was my first dive watch, so it holds a special place in my heart. I eased into the dive scene with this compressor style because it looked less dive and more classy. This beautiful Seastrong Diver 300 Heritage has a 42mm case size with a 21mm lug width. Screw down crowns, sapphire crystal, 300 meters of water resistance, and an in-house AL525 automatic movement. It beats at 28,800 VPH, which is 4 Hz, has 26 joules, and a power reserve of 28 hours. I'm really glad I had this as an option to entice me further into the style, and it really looks great on the wrist. I really think it has some strong points and deserves a spot in my collection. Rather than read you the entire origin of ball watchmaking, I will include this shot which outlines how it began, and you may pause if you like. Now on to my ball train master. One of the few watches I can say when I saw this in person, it was an impulse buy waiting to happen. I stopped into my favorite watch store in our local mall called Regal Watches, and true to form, they had enticed me yet again with their selections. I had purchased my first ball from them, and this second one immediately stood out in the display case. So much for having money that day, because I laid claim to this one like Tom Cruise laid claim to his land in Far and Away. I had my friend with me that day who also wanted it, so I couldn't possibly let him own this right in front of me. I made an offer, and the rest is history. This one comes in a magnificent sunburst blue. It has the in-house ball RR1102 caliber and 14 gas tubes for optimal viewing at night. With a day-date complication, 30 meters of water resistance, AR-coated sapphire crystal on the front and the back, and a great continuous folding bracelet. This watch looks great in person and really works well as a dress watch or a classy dinner watch with your significant or insignificant other. The screw down crown has that nod to an old train nose and I love that tasteful reference. So if you're looking for that perfect night out watch, I do recommend looking into this brand because they are superb. On to our next watch is yet another ball. It's hard to judge which watch looks better of the two. I'm smitten by both. This has some Rolex Explorer or maybe Datejust vibes, and I am fine with that. This was my first purchase from the Regal Watch Exchange, and it was the catalyst that sent me back for the previous ball watch I showed you. If I had to choose a favorite, this is actually my pick of the two, and it's absolutely stunning. The light play rivals any Rolex, and in most cases, I feel this watch looks better with a much lower price tag. This Swiss-made Engineer 2 has a striking onyx black dial and tritium loom. It has the automatic in-house RR1103 caliber that beats at 4 Hz. A very comfortable 40mm case size and 13mm of thickness, with a Cyclops sapphire crystal front along with AR coating. It has a comfortable 100m of water resistance, screw down crown, and a 38 hour power reserve with a folding bracelet. This is one of my favorite watches in the Collection, and when you see it in person, you cannot deny its glory. So let's roll on to the next watch. 
This is the acclaimed Lunar Pilot with the PVD coated case. I had this one in my last collection video, so I'll spare you the details and instead just highlight the watch. I use this nylon strap instead of the stock strap because it's worlds more comfortable. Or should I say moons? Anyway, this is a great iconic watch for every collection and very affordable. I opted for the all black version due to the font used for Bolova and the fact there is no date complication. It wears a little bit large on my six and three quarter inch wrist, but it feels like it was made for me by the lunar occupants. This all black deco for the Bulova really makes it pop on the wrist, and it's very comfortable to wear. I love the accuracy, look, and overall package of this watch. If you like watches even a little, this is truly a must own at the price point. If I had any gripe, it is about the larger case size but they have attempted to fix that problem recently with the new models, so I may be moving on to one of those eventually. But for now, I am happy with this amazingly well-priced timepiece. Another watch I have showcased in my prior collection video, but definitely not one to skip over. I have to say that this Grand Seiko is the favorite among all of my watches. It really feels quality, even more so than my Rolex I will show shortly. For those of you not familiar with the spring drive, the rotor or glide wheel makes eight full revolutions every second generating a slight electric current, thus giving it that smooth sweep you see here. Its weight, its Zeratsu finish, and its incredible spring drive movement keep my eyes coming back to it as the crown jewel in my collection. The watch here really speaks for itself. I can swoon and drool over at any time of day and not feel the least bit self-conscious. If you're going to buy a Seiko or 10 Seikos, why not put your coin into a quality piece like this, rather than a Seiko family reunion collection? I know I grow weary of the collection videos that think Seiko watches are the only space fillers in their cases. I promise not to subject you to that, but rather a well-rounded collection. I think condensing your Seiko arsenal down to one of these is truly the way to Japanese Zen. The first of my growing Hamilton collection is the Reverse Panda, a classy looking gem with a black Milanese band I threw on it to enhance its class. I love this mechanical and timeless look, but sometimes I wish they had made the off-white chronos a polar white instead. That sentiment follows to the next one I'll show you, but first, a gratuitous wrist shot. I'm still very happy with this look, and in all fairness, I really need to include this one more into my rotation when I go out. It really is a beautiful adornment piece, and deserving of flaunting. I really like black dials because they match with almost any outfit and slim down the overall size. When you wear a Hamilton, it makes you feel different. But it's a good different. That kind of different that denotes class. I appreciated this style of watch enough to get two, and even though I still prefer a more flashy polar white coloration, I can't help but fall in love with this every time I put it on. I figured a reverse silver Milanese mesh would complement my previous watch quite well. The slight patina on the style was unexpected and leans more toward a vintage look that captures an essence in watchmaking that is timeless. Hamilton's horological history is fascinating to say the least, so I'm honored to own a piece of its history. On wrist, it feels good, albeit a bit thick looking at it from a side profile. Still, I can't deny the presence these watches have, and really a great affordable introduction to luxury watches. This is definitely a more traditional look, and this particular watch was my first mechanical Swiss chronograph, so it would be difficult, to say the least, to put this one up for sale. But in watch collecting, a rule of thumb is never get too attached to one specific piece. This edition was my first Swiss-made purchase in my watch collecting journey, and even though it has a quartz movement, it delivers that same introduction to luxury as the prior two, with that pilot chrono feel. I love the textured dial and larger case size with that brushed polished look. It's really miles ahead of many other watches in this vein, and pairs up nicely with this silk cloth strap I included that features hints of orange stitching. Quartz accuracy is always a plus, and with Hamilton, you know quality is of the utmost concern. And on wrist, it doesn't disappoint with its unique presence. 
out in the sunlight it really catches that texture on the dial. It really proves to be a great everyday with a slight sporty feel. Hamilton works as one of the best entries to Swiss and luxury, maybe second to Tissot. I've had a wide span of comments from bad to good concerning this watch, but mostly I think it's just subjective opinions. Even though I purchased this used, I still love the quality and value it has to offer, and I plan to give it more wrist time this summer. Another watch that has stayed in my collection is this Hamilton Khaki Field King, with an added bund band to enhance its real estate on the wrist. I felt it necessary to complement the smaller case thickness of 12mm, and it adds some tool watch elements to an already classic field style watch. When I need to attend a rock concert or just grab a utility watch for the day, I look to the Field King for my Flieger style royalty. As you can see, this wears wonderfully with this style band and always sparks new conversation when seen out on the town. It is a timeless classic look with a great black and white contrast that pops even at this smaller size of 40 millimeters. I also run to this one every time I need a break from the mundane two-piece straps that plague the watch world today. You might be wondering if my name is Hamilton, since I own so many, but I can assure you it's neither Hamilton nor Seiko. Now for an amazing reinterpretation of a 1960s dive watch, we come to this sleek and covert legend. I love the unique way this watch wears and makes me feel like I just activated my working hyperdrive on the Millennium Falcon. The all black matches just about any attire I choose to clothe myself with and it looks stunning doing it. With the wide variety of case options and dial colors, I opted to go with the more modern black. I don't know. Maybe it just makes me feel more like a tactical frogman or Harry Tasker from True Lies. Right away you may have noticed I changed out the original strap to this more basic black rubber strap. I wasn't a fan of the fake looking Milanese rubber strap that was paired with this originally. This stealthy compressor style diver has great dimensions at 42mm case size and a 12.7mm thickness. The hits don't stop with a sapphire crystal, several layers of AR coating on the underside, screw down crown with 300 meters water resistance, and an in-house automatic L888 movement that beats at 25,200 VPH, along with a whopping 72 hour power reserve. We're back with the watch that needs no introduction and will probably never leave my collection. This is the true to mission Hesselite crystal version of course. Some may see it as sacrilegious to remove the original band, but I go with what is comfortable rather than relying on hokey religions and ancient straps. 
Here, the devil is in the details with that amazing contrast between light and dark, and who can deny the rich history that comes with this stellar timepiece? Every time I put this on, I know that someone somewhere will recognize it eventually, even if I do live in the barren wasteland of wristwatch ignorance, where the Invicta and the citizen gangs reign supreme. Despite those sad facts, I'm still happy to gaze down upon it with pride as I stumble through the ghost town I live in, and I'm always eager and ready to educate the watch layman that may cross my path. This watch is a persona of its wearer and truly a must-have. When you are ready to graduate from whatever watch rut you may be in, you will gain all the respect when you walk in the room with the Speedmaster. For a quick refreshment, I picked up this Dr. Pepper colored Orient Kamasu, which was limited to 2,000 pieces. Still has some good fizz and pop to it. The coloration is deliberate in its approach. I used to own the Orient Bambino version 2 and a chronograph option, but opted to keep this one due to its color variation. This is a fun spin on a classic dive watch with 200 meters water resistance and a unidirectional bezel with a sapphire crystal. You get a lot of watch for the price. It's like buying an entry-level Schecter guitar with all the bells and whistles. Bravo. As you can see, this looks great with the sun illuminating the colors. However, the dial has a very granular texture I didn't spot until intense light. I'm not saying I hate it, but I'm not a huge fan either. For many other reasons, this one still beat out my other Orients, and I plan to keep it. This model is actually called the Root Beer, but don't see that as much, aside from maybe the band. I love the Day-Date feature and coin grooved edge. It's really a classic, and it's just what the Dr. Pepper ordered. I would think Roberto Clemente would be proud to have such a classy watch that honors his legacy. I used to have the Blue Dial variant in my last collection, but I have since upgraded to this limited edition of 3,000 pieces. My number is 1440, so it's just about right at the halfway point in production. This came with an extra NATO strap with the Pirates baseball team's colors and a replica of a signed baseball by the esteemed humanitarian ball player. Now for the stats, just like the back of a baseball card. We have a case size of 40 millimeters with a 12.2 millimeter thickness, a domed sapphire crystal with AR coating, 50 meters of water resistance, an in-house Aura 754 that beats at 4 hertz with a 41 hour power reserve. Also, we're talking 26 joules for everyday wear and tear, and Superluminova C3 on the hands, numbers, and indices. It wears a bit small on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist, but it's a small price to pay for an homage to a well-rounded player. On display today, we have the only meteorite dial in my collection so far, but these are quickly growing on me. I replaced the leather band for black and white stitched suede to dress it up a bit. I felt it deserved something nice being discontinued and all, and the pairing was a definite improvement. I feel this has a lot of Submariner vibes, but I really like the look overall better. The patina has darkened the bronze case nicely and wears its age on my sleeve. To wear a piece of space on your wrist is always a nice conversation starter also, and like an Instagram model, it has the looks to go with it. This one is quite the spec monster with an impressive 500 meters of water resistance, which you could actually take scuba diving. A 41 millimeter case size by 14 millimeter thickness, a double dome anti-reflective sapphire crystal, Swiss Superluminova C3 on the hands, hour markers, and also a dot on the bezel a screw-down crown, and a Swiss SW200 Solita movement. One of the oldest meteorites was used on this style, which is approximately 4.5 billion years old, so it only has me beat by a little. So glad I purchased this one and look forward to the next meteor shower. I know, I know, this Phoebus craze is getting out of hand, but it could be worse. It could be Seiko's, and I promise to sell one of these in the near future. So... Getting on to this discontinued model, it was the first I was introduced to this brand, and I just fell in love with the dials they offer. So, is it a quick romance? Yes, I would say it is, but being promiscuous with watches is probably only hazardous to your bank account rather than your wrist. Promiscuity aside, 
I ask for you just to sit back and enjoy what this watch offers. A great bracelet, along with some Omega Seamaster nods, and a few drinks later, I think you'll fall in love also. I'm inspired. I think maybe I'll start up a website called Watch Hub. I mean, how can that mushroom coral dial go unnoticed? So fancy, so ocean-themed, and oh so gorgeous. I replaced the clasp to the beater variety so I wouldn't scar the original, but it does nothing to distract from the natural beauty. When you want to rebel or just go with the underdog, you turn to Rado. The company has gained some ground, but many people I know who know watches still have never heard of them. That said, I find merit in owning part of their heritage. Founded in 1917 by three brothers and already residing in Switzerland, they came to the conclusion that watchmaking would be their bread and butter. Under their last name, Schlepp & Company, they set out to do that. Approximately 40 years later, the name Rado, coming from the Esperanto language meaning wheel, took the place of their prior name. This bronze 42mm case size and 12.5mm thickness fits most perfectly. Its sapphire front and brown ceramic ring give off a tasteful complement to the brown sunburst dial. The inner workings consist of an automatic Swiss ETA C07611 with a very impressive 80 hours of power reserve, thus dropping the hertz to 3. I've always wanted to own one of these and I think it's a great starting point to experience the brand firsthand. A watch from 1996 dates the oldest watch in my collection so far. Made for cave spelunking, the coveted Polar Dial is still a good investment today. For the record, I'm not a huge Rolex fan, but being the avid watch collector I am, I needed to experience this at some point in my journey. I will probably hang on to this for some time if not hand it off to my son one day. My grandmother passed away the end of last year right around the time I acquired this, so even though it was a rough time in my life, I think of her every time I look down, which in turn makes it a good memory. I was able to try this one on before getting it, so I knew it was the look I wanted. Not extravagant with features, but leans more toward rugged simplicity. The case size is a perfect 40 millimeters with a fixed bezel, drilled lugs, a cyclops for the date window, and a 12.2 millimeter thickness. The tritium loom has long since fizzled out, unfortunately, but should patina nicely in the years to come. It does have a sapphire crystal, but no AR coating. The Rolex Caliber 3185 graces the innards with 31 jewels for long haul functionality. I consider it a grail watch, and I'm appreciative I have it. Hey, what do you know, a Seiko? It's like the pot calling the kettle black, but in this case we have an illustrious green guilloché dial that I couldn't resist. Plus, there were way too many positives not to buy it. First, a girl named Emerald sold it to me. And second, it was on a special sale that day. And then last but not least, my last name is Green. So the stars aligned, and I dropped the cash at Morgan Jewelers at my local mall. The gold indices and hands popped like an Orville Redenbacher fireside. I usually run from Seiko's screaming, but after viewing this, I turned to mush in Emerald's hands. To highlight the watch's attributes, we'll start with the 38.5mm case size that is 11.8mm thick. The front box-shaped Hardlex crystal really displays the green dial with the gold splendidly. The movement is a Seiko Automatic 4R35 that beats at 3Hz with 23 joules. It comes with a light olive brown strap originally, but I opted for the darker leather band with cream-colored stitching and deployment clasp, which really brings it to life. I don't mean to hate on these watches too bad. There are a multitude of choices which are priced fairly which makes Seiko watches more attainable to the casual collector. Today the student has become the tutor. I learned a great lesson from FedEx after leaving my home for 5 minutes to take care of a chore and missing this delivery, but after I drove 20 miles to the nearest location at darn near closing time to pick it up and apprehensively open the box, my eyes were pleasured in ways some would consider to be unnatural. Was this my second wife? No, it was my first. My left wrist and this watch are officially married. The best part of this deal is I snagged it for an amazing price, so I know she's not just with me for the money. Although my wife's a bit of a chunky monkey, she's got everything else a young man craves at a 39mm case size with most of the girth in the thickness at 146 a domed sapphire illustrates her curves, and a 24-hour graduated fixed brush bezel speaks to her style. 
Of course, a screw-down crown provides that oh-so-sweet spot of 200 meters water resistance. Her black fabric strap provides a yellow stripe to complement her GMT hand, and since she's from Switzerland, she has the COSC certified MT5652 self-winding mechanical movement with a bi-directional rotor system. But don't worry, she's not woke. She's as casual as she is sporty and as luminous as the day even at night with her ceramic impregnable Super Luminova hour markers applied to the dial. Whew, as you can tell, I got a little carried away with that last one, but now it's time to be a gentleman. I can gravitate away now from the detailed info and just relax as I tell you about this watch. A very stylish answer to introductory luxury and one of the best for casual day at work when only a collared shirt is required. You'll feel empowered by walking into the office wearing a Swiss maid watch that you can probably lie about when you mention the price. But wait, we're behaving like gentlemen here and lying if caught would be hazardous to your character. Instead, tell the truth and they'll be floored at the actual price. It seems funny to me that most of the watches I own, I end up replacing the strap. Not sure who is in charge of pairing, but I know I could do a much better job, hint hint, to sew. Anyway, I'll come down from Cloud9 just long enough now to say how much I do like the way this one plays with the light. Those indices really catch your eye like the way a diamond glistens in the sun. And since this is a diamond in the rough, I do highly recommend it to add it to your everyday wear. There are so many other models from this company that are great, but maybe check out the Lilac also if you are interested in this brand. For our last watch, we have a Zeppelin. No relation to the 70s rock band, but I always thought it would be cool if they did a tribute watch to the group. Here we have the 100 year anniversary German quartz watch that always gets comments due to its vintage feel, so it's always fun when I can also show the full blue loomed dial to go along with their initial awe. I had to import this watch, so it took a while to get here, but well worth the wait. I guess you could say it came from over the hills and far away. It is just a bit disappointing to see a tick when I could have seen a sweep. However, it still manages to impress everyone who views it. I guess, in all honesty, I don't see watches like this either when I'm out. It's also extremely hard not to start singing Dancing Days every moment I need the time. They chose an interesting placement on the date window. I guess it doesn't bother me too much since my Alpina used the same area. I'd like to hear all of your opinions since most people don't even know this brand exists. Thanks for watching my video and subscribe if you feel the urge. We'll end this now with the fronts and backs of the final 11 watches.